Hi everyone, welcome to Lola's Frugal Life. This is episode number 183. Today we're going to be talking about tips to reduce paper clutter. So please stick around for a few quick words from our sponsor and we'll get right into the show. Okay, so this week we're going to start out with a frugal tip of the week since our topic isn't um, really a frugal topic. So I always try and keep some frugal aspects to the episodes when the topic itself isn't um, very centered around frugality. So my frugal tip of the week this week is kind of general, but it's more just about to just remind yourself to practice being mindful about your spending. When you pick something up to purchase it, just make sure to question yourself before throwing it in your cart. Um, Even the most budget conscious of us can get caught up with making an impulse purchase once in a while. Um, So just remind yourself to think about your purchases before going ahead and making them because often you'll realize that you did just grab something, not thinking about it, and um, maybe it's something you really didn't need or really didn't want. So just a reminder to be mindful. Um, Okay, so this week, like I said, I wanted to talk about tips to reduce paper clutter. So paper can sometimes be really difficult to keep organized because it doesn't stop coming in. Every day, more mail comes in. Doctors send you home with papers. If you have kids, they come home with papers. If you go to a seminar, um, you come home with more tons of papers and so on and so on. So it's really important to have a good way to um, stay on top of your paper as best as you can, and I guess mainly to just um, being able to get rid of as much of it as you can and trying to keep um, as little as possible actual hard copy papers um, on hand. And, you know, when you have a, a pile of papers in a visible space that need to be dealt with, it just doesn't make you feel good. So you want to try and eliminate that as much as possible. Every time, at least I know me, if I see a pile of paper sitting there, it's kind of like they're just constantly saying like, hello, you need to deal with these papers. So um, that's why I think it's really important to kind of have um, a way to try and keep papers under control so that it doesn't get like kind of annoying with having these papers in various different little places and, and knowing that you need to deal with those things. So um, I guess the first tip to talk about is mail. Um, Since we all pretty much get mail every day, this is the most important one to keep on top of. And um, I find that if mail gets placed down on the counter, it has a much greater chance of sitting there for a while. So for me, um, most of the time when I get mail, um, 90% of it, and sometimes, not 90% even, sometimes all of it is junk mail. So now I know this is a very common tip. A lot of people say to do this, but just throwing it out there anyway, because it's important and it is something that I definitely do is to walk straight to the garbage can with the mail in my hand and um, just sort through it and throw the junk in the garbage right at that moment. Whatever is left usually might be a bill um, or like a new insurance policy or something like that. Most of the time it's going to be a bill or um, a bill and garbage. It's usually one or two bills maybe and the majority of it's garbage. So the garbage goes right in the trash and the bill goes into a bill folder that I keep um, right in our kitchen. I have like a little, um, I don't even know what you call it. It's just kind of like a little file stand that you'd put like a couple of folders in and I have one for bills. And the bills go right into that folder. So it goes right into that folder, junk goes right into the garbage, and then I don't have to think about it again. Then once a week, I go through the bill folder, all my bills are together, I, um, you know, I pay the bills, whatever, and move on. But the point is just that the second the mail comes in, it's being either thrown out or put in the bill folder. Um, Sometimes I will get something like, I said, like an insurance policy or something like that, that might need to be filed. Um, And I'll also just stick that in with the bills too because I just kind of keep that stuff together. And what I'm supposed to do is when I do the bills, when I see those things that also came in during the week that need to be filed, I'm supposed to go downstairs into our filing cabinet and file those things away. Um, Many times I just say, oh yeah, I'll do that next week (laughs) until the bill folder gets too thick and then I'm like, all right, I have to go file this stuff. Um, I don't know why it's super easy to just go downstairs and file it, but it's just one of those things that I never feel like doing. But the point is, is that the mail is not sitting out and even the things that have to be um, filed aren't sitting out. So it just makes it a little easier that everything just goes right into a spot. If you um, like to have magazines or catalogs around, things like that, 
Um, just make sure you have a central location to keep them in if possible, maybe like a magazine basket or a certain spot where they go. And then that way that just makes it easier when you do periodically need to go through them because you can just sit down in one spot, see what you have, toss the old ones, keep the new ones. And it just kind of makes it easier to stay on top of it rather than if they're kind of scattered um, throughout your home. Or even if you do have them scattered throughout your home because maybe you're sitting in different locations to read them, um, maybe if you occasionally just kind of gather them up and put them in one place, that way when it does become time to go through them, um, it's just one spot. You just have to sit down and just go through it, go through really quickly. Um, as, as far as filing papers, you really want to try not to file things that you're only going to need for the short term because chances are once it gets stuck into a filing cabinet or a filing system, you're not going to remember for a while um, to go get rid of it. Um, you want to have a place for short term things like that, like receipts or um, something that you might need in the near future. Um, that you don't want to stick in a long-term filing cabinet. So maybe just have like one central spot where you can stick those types of short-term things. If you're holding on to papers that contain information for an upcoming event, just consider if you can possibly enter the details into the um, into your phone calendar. Because when, when you put an event in the calendar, you can drill down further and there's usually spots for notes, addresses, um, all that kind of information. Um, and if there's more detailed information that you don't feel like typing into your calendar, you can always just take a picture of the flyer and then consider tossing the original. Um, because sometimes, um, you know, you have like multiple different events going on and you just stick something and then you forget to throw it out or you forget to even grab it the night when the event is and then you don't have all the information anyway. So if you can just kind of get that information stored um, in one central place, like especially on your phone that you have with you, it just makes it easier. Or sometimes what I'll do too is if it's um, a flyer for something I'm going to be going to soon, I'll even just fold it up and stick it in my um, purse or put it in my car. That way when we're going to the event, I'll know that I have it. And then when it's done, you could just toss it in the trash. Um, another thing is that you can also consider... Um, certain types of documents that you kind of want to keep the information, but you don't really need the original for any particular reason, such as like car maintenance receipts or home maintenance re receipts, things like that. You can consider scanning them in or um, taking a photo of them and saving them on your computer. Again, you'll have all the information. You can keep them in one um, file location on your computer. Um, but it's not the type of thing that you really need to have a hard copy of necessarily. Um, but maybe you want to remember, like, when's the last time you had your oil changed or when's the last time you had something maintained in your home or whatever. So you want to have the information, but maybe you don't need to take up all that storage space. So you can consider um, putting that um, on your computer electronically. And even with the things that you do um, put in your um, filing cabinet, it is a good idea once in a while to just kind of go through them at least once a, once a year and just kind of see what's in there and see if there's anything you can get rid of. Because a lot of times we put stuff in there thinking we probably would want to keep something and then it turns out we really um, don't need to keep it. So it's, it's kind of good to kind of give yourself a little time to let it sit it, for things that did go in there and then just kind of take a look again and see if you still have the same thoughts on it. Another um, thing that usually takes up a lot of file space and kind of paper clutter is product manuals. So if, if a product is for something like super, super simple, like um, maybe like a basic toaster or maybe a Bluetooth speaker or a hair dryer or something simple like that, you probably don't need to keep the manual. Um, so just really kind of consider before you go filing the manuals away if it's something that you really truly think that you um, might need in the future. Um, some people suggest that you don't need to keep manuals at all because you can pretty much find them all online. I personally do still keep um, manuals, especially for things like appliances, vacuum cleaners, pool equipment, um, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's worked out well for me whenever we've needed something or we needed a part to repair something or needed to call about uh, a problem we were having, it always made it easier for me to just go right to where the documents were and I ha always had the manual and I pull it out. Um, but they can definitely accumulate over time, so it's important that you go through them occasionally and toss out the ones for things you no longer have. And sometimes it's even kind of fun when you go through them because I remember finding like these manuals for like 
CD players and um, old like cordless phones. We used to have like these cordless phones that you'd have like a gazillion of them all throughout the house. Some people might still have them, but we didn't have them anymore. So it was just like I for- had forgotten that I had all these manuals for things that we no longer had for a while. So it is important to go through them once in a while and just toss out the ones for things that you don't have. Um, if you do choose to go the route of not keeping manuals at all and just relying online, a good idea is to keep a list electronically um, that includes the date of the purchase, where you purchased it, the model number, and any other key information related to that product. That way, if you do need to look up the manual online in the future, you won't have to be guessing like which model you have or any other information about the product. You'll have it all there, and then you can be sure that you're looking up the correct manual. Another um, tip for reducing paper clutter is to go through those takeout manuals, not manuals, menus. <laughs> go through those takeout menus. Um, make sure that there's only one menu for each restaurant if you even need that. Most restaurants now have their menus online. So I feel like most of the restaurants that we order from, even though we do still have their menus in our cabinet, we pretty much always order the same things anyway. Like you kind of know like your favorite things that you order from your local restaurants. So the amount of times we actually pull out a, a, a menu is so few. Um, and again, they are available online. So consider if you even need to keep those menus if you still have them. And also look and see if you have any in there that you've never even ordered from. I know occasionally we'll get one from a local restaurant that'll just kind of stick it in your mailbox or whatever on your front door. And I'll think, oh, you know, we might order from this place one day. And I'll stick it in my little folder where our menus are and it'll sit in there for years and we've never ordered. So just maybe that's somewhere that you can kind of scale back on um, and get rid of some of that paper. Uh, Another tip is to have receipts emailed to you if possible. I know a lot of stores don't do this yet, but some of them are starting to go that route. Um, One thing I always find uh, find odd is um, TJ Maxx does, they'll say, do you want print only or print and email? And I'm like, why can't they just email? Like, if I'm going to get a paper one, I don't really need the email one. Um, although I guess using this, this, uh, idea to save paper, it would be better to just, um, get the paper and the email because then you could just toss the paper one. But I just always feel like I wish they would offer the option of print only or email only, not print or print and email. Cause I'd rather them just email it to me. But as more stores are going this way, um, that's something that you can consider of just having the, um, the receipt emailed to you. That way it's one less thing that you have to file away or have to deal with. So one other um, tip is that when you are filing away an updated document, like say you got a new insurance policy and you're going to go to your filing cabinet and file it away. Sometimes it can be really easy to just run down wherever your filing cabinet is, stick the new document in and leave. Well, while you're there, take an extra two seconds and grab the old document that you don't need anymore and get rid of that. If you have an expired insurance policy and you're putting the new insurance policy in, get rid of the old one while you're right there. That'll save you time in the future when you're going through um, your files to clear them up. And then try and reduce paper coming in as much as possible. So consider signing up for electronic delivery of your bills. Um, I do pay my bills electronically, however, I have not yet gotten there as far as getting them delivered electronically, Um, but I know that it's a really great way to reduce paper coming in. I just haven't um, gotten myself comfortable yet that I will not miss a bill um, because I'm so used to the paper ones coming in and then paying the paper bill. Um, Great, my dogs just started barking. My son's probably home from work. (laughs) Um, So I'm always afraid to miss them. But I did read a good tip for this if you're trying to convert yourself from paper bills to electronic bills is to create a spreadsheet with a list of the bills that you're expecting to get and the dates when you usually get them. And then that way, when they um, 
you know, when you're looking, when it's time that you should receive the electronic bill, you can um, reference back to your spreadsheet and then make sure that you have received all the bills that you expected. And you can always just transition them um, a little at a time in using this system. So maybe you pick like two bills that you want to start receiving electronically and you just have a list of two. And then you're like, okay, I got that, got that, paid, paid. And then maybe do that for a couple months. And then after a little while, maybe you add another couple. It was just an idea. I thought it might be a a good way because I know it would definitely be better for me to switch to receiving the bills electronically. Um, I just haven't gotten there yet where I was sure that I wouldn't miss one. So um, that's that's an option too. And then of course, um, I think most of us probably already get electronic statements from our banks. Um, But if you're not already doing that, consider, consider doing that as well and any other things that you can get delivered electronically um, are also helpful. The less paper you can have coming in, the more you can store electronically. It just makes it easier to maintain it overall. So that's it for today. Uh, I hope maybe something here was helpful. If um, you would like to reach out to me with any tips or suggestions, you can reach me at facebook.com slash life. You can also email me at life at gmail.com. We also have a private listeners group, which is at facebook.com slash groups slash life. I check it pretty much every day. So if you'd like to join us over there, just submit a request and I will approve it as soon as I see it. There's also a link in the episode um, to financially support the show if that's something you're interested in. Uh, Please don't forget to subscribe if you like the show. And if you would like to leave a rating or review, that would be really helpful. Thank you to everyone who has done that lately. I've gotten um, a few in the last, um, over the last week or so, and it's just really nice. You don't even have to take the time to write something if you don't have time. Just clicking the five stars um, is supposed to really help with the show coming up in search results for others to find it. So that's really helpful to me. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a really awesome day.